Today, I'm going to share the secret to overcoming overwhelm so that you can go from stressing to impressing in three simple steps. Even if you have a busy home and a demanding job and absolutely zero time for yourself. With these tools, you can feel better very quickly. So sadly, overwhelm seems to be how we live now. I know I felt overwhelmed pretty much every day from like my mid-teens to my early 40s. And I still battle that feeling sometimes now. So for so long, it felt like I was in a constant state like a panic with a million things in my head. And on the good days, I was like checking things off of my list, feeling like a boss. And on the bad days, that panic froze me. And I was like, oh my God, I have so much to do. I will never get it done. I'm going to fail. I'm going to let people down. And I had like a, a, like a sense of, I just, I can't do this anymore. I would wake up in the morning with a to-do list in my head. And literally my first thought was about what I had to do today and maybe what I forgot to do yesterday. Sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night in a panic thinking, crap, I forgot to send that email or I forgot to make those muffins for snack duty today. And then right into the, oh no, people are going to be disappointed in me. And of course they will because I'm disappointed in me. My coworkers are going to think they can't trust me. What is my child's teacher going to think of me if I don't come through with the snacks? Well, obviously she's going to think I'm a bad parent, right? Like these thoughts are so heavy. And the days would go by in this busy blur of wrestling children into outfits and snowsuits and car seats and making nutritious lunches and arguing with them to wear weather appropriate clothing, like a jacket, Uh, always worrying about what people are going to think uh, when they see my kid at the bus stop with only a t-shirt on, or what they would think if my kid had a substandard lunch, or if we were late. And really, I didn't want people to know the truth. Because the truth was that I was barely holding it all together. And I had no clue what I was doing. And I was definitely not as organized as I should be. I I just didn't want to be seen as like the hot mess mom. I wanted to be the cool as a cucumber mom, like unflappable and organized and always knowing exactly what to do. But I never quite measured up to that. And that's just like my mom's side. I also have a job. So after dropping them off at daycare, I was stressing about the traffic and worrying about being late again and that email and that project that I needed to have done today and how I was possibly going to get it all done with the meetings that I have to go to all day long and how I can avoid Kathy on the way in because she's going to want to talk my ear off. I don't have time for that today, but I also don't want to be rude to her. And I work my butt off all day and I keep my mouth shut when I want to scream and I write nice emails when I really want to write, are you serious right now? And I fight traffic on the way home, hoping to make it before daycare closing, not even one thought about dinner. I have no idea what I'm going to be making for dinner. And it's probably going to be chicken nuggets. And I feel shame about that, that it's chicken nuggets Uh, because good mothers they make nutritious meals and good mothers hide vegetables and everything. And, and they must stare lovingly at their children as they consume every single bite of the nutrient packed meals. And we regale each other about our day. Right. Right. That's what the happy families do. Right. But instead my kids cling and they overstimulate me. And as I make dinner, I try not to cry. And having made it through dinner, I I sit there, I'm holding plates of chicken nuggets, each one with a bite out of them, one bite out of each nugget, trying to decide if I should toss them or save them, knowing that my kids are going to want a snack in five minutes and stressing about whether I can handle even giving them a bath tonight or if maybe we can stretch it one more day. And finally, they go to bed. And I think that I will get some me time. Finally, I can decompress, but they don't stay in bed. And I don't know what to do to get them to stay in bed. And I feel like the biggest failure as I wrestle with my guilt for raising my voice the third time they get out of bed 
And for everything else in my day, like the wasted food and for not having all of the answers all the time and for not texting my friend back or keeping in touch with my family or even spending time with my husband. And I know that tomorrow is going to be exactly the same. And I wonder how long I can do this. And I know in my heart that everyone else is doing a way better job. And I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong and why this feels so hard. Because I I became a parent to add more joy to my life. That was the goal. And it seemed like other parents were experiencing that joy, but not me. I was just coping, just scraping through each day, trying to hold it all together. Anyone relate to that? Have you ever felt like that? I felt like that for years until I finally burned out. My body finally said enough. And I couldn't do anything without crying. My nervous system was so heightened that noise, even the children's laughter, felt like pain to my body. And that was a long recovery from there. And this is why I'm so passionate about preventing burnout, because you can bounce back from overwhelm much quicker than from burnout. So what do you think is the answer? That was my biggest question at the time. How can I get better while continuing to parent and pay my mortgage? Is that like... Is that impossible? Well, I searched and searched for years before I finally figured it out. Still to this day, if you search for solutions to overwhelm, you're going to find a lot of what I found back then, which is things like get organized, make lists, practice time management. I bought like giant mommy calendars would take up a whole wall and they had a row for each of the kids to keep track of all of their activities school functions, appointments, all the things they had to do. And all of these tools are fine. But it's like teaching you how to walk on a broken leg. You're going to get a lot further in the long run and with a lot less pain if you just first take the time to heal that broken leg. And so the secret, the secret to overcoming overwhelm is to tackle the problem from the inside out. And it's not as hard as it sounds. It doesn't have to take forever. So here are three steps to overcoming overwhelm for good that you can get started on today. Step one, soothe your nervous system. When you have been pushing through for a long time, your nervous system is on overdrive. My nervous system gives me two big clues that it's in overdrive. Clue number one is that I turn into a squirrel, like twitchy and on high alert for the next thing. Like, oh, what's going on? Oh my God, what's next? What are the needs? What do I have to do? At least that's what I assume squirrels are are thinking when they're twitching around. Okay. The second clue that I become hypercritical and snappy. Everything is wrong. Everything is a mess. Everyone is stupid. Get out of my office. Like, so that's not good. You know what your signs are? Sometimes it's subtle, like tummy aches. And sometimes it's more obvious, like emotions come right to the surface, like when you have to cry in the car, for example. So when we're in a place of fight or flight, we're not really able to learn new things or do any productive self-reflection. Self-criticism, yes. Self-reflection, no. So we first need to soothe our nervous system. And I do this with my mental physio or mentio exercises. These are very short five to 10 second exercises that you can do as many times as you can throughout your day. And it signals to your nervous system that everything is okay. And you can turn off now. So let's try one quickly right now. Close your eyes and just give a little smile like the Mona Lisa. Feel your face relax as you count to five. And that's it. Five seconds and you are already starting to soothe your nervous system. If this sounds interesting to you, grab my burnout escape plan on my website, mindbs.ca, which gives you a set of exercises to do during your work day. And you should notice a huge difference within a few days. All right. So once you've got your nervous system under control, you are ready for step two. 
which is to shed your mind BS. You are ready to tackle the root of the problem, which is your old programming. If this is a new term for you, your mind creates programs throughout your lifetime to help keep you safe based on all of the input from all the world around you. Maybe your mind noticed that you get praised when you help out and you get told to get off the couch and help when you're resting. And these turn into programs that say people love you when you help them and people don't love you when you are resting. And throughout your life, your mind tests these programs. Is it really true that anger is bad? Oh, yes, look at that boy got mad in our class and now nobody wants to be friends with him. But that other boy over there, he's very nice and he helped my friend get the ball out from under the stairs and now everyone wants to play with him. So my mind knows that helpful is lovable, nice is lovable, and angry means unlovable. And we all have different experiences, so we all have different programs. But what is universally true is that these programs were created in our childhood, solidified in adolescence, and continue to guide our behavior today. And our programs cause our mind to yell mind BS at us. Because our mind wants us to keep running those programs. Our mind is very attached to those programs. And so some of these programs are helpful and they continue to serve us. And some of these programs are total BS and they are keeping us stuck in the patterns that are crushing us. So the fastest way to get better is to stop these patterns. And to do that, you need to uncover the programs and the, the BS that your mind is throwing at you and then rewrite it to something that is actually true. So when I talked about my life and my overwhelm, did you catch the mind BS stemming from my old programs? I had programs around what makes a good mom, a good colleague and a good wife. My mind BS told me that in order to be a worthy human, I needed to solve all the problems for all the people. I need to have all the answers. I need to be on top of everything all the time. But I also needed to be fun and bubbly and competent and patient and loving and make everyone around me happy. And that was overwhelming. How could I do all of these things while keeping up with the physical demands of life? No wonder we are so overwhelmed. We have this constant stream of BS running subconsciously and telling us that we aren't good enough that we aren't doing enough, and that we aren't lovable enough. And so we do more. We strive to be more. And we can never rest because that would make us lazy. And lazy people are not lovable, you see? It doesn't matter how many lists you make or how effectively you manage your time. If your mind BS is telling you you are not lovable, if you're not helping everyone all the time, then you're never going to be able to slow down and rest. So you first need to uncover your old programs, figure out which ones are BS, and then rewrite them to align with what actually matters to you in your life right now. And if you want to get started uncovering your old programs, you can head over to mindbs.ca forward slash blog and click on the post with the title, What is Old Programming? And there's a video and a free download to get you started. Okay, step three, implement your new programs. So changing your mind, reprogramming beliefs that that have been there for like most of your life is not an easy task. It's great to say that family comes first and a completely different thing to tell your boss that you're not going to have this project finished on time because you need to go to your kid's soccer game. So you need some tools. And the biggest tools that help me stick with my new programs are no BS boundaries, courageous communication, and learning to befriend my feelings. All of these help me to lay out a plan for the tougher situations. And they were all anchored in my conviction about what matters most to me. What do I value most in each aspect of my life? If what matters most to me is that my kids feel loved and I have their back, what's the best way to accomplish that? I think 
making them feel loved has a lot more to do with hugs and active listening than it does maintaining a perfect house and hiding vegetables in everything. So that allowed me to take a whole lot of things off of my to-do list. And then with my courageous communication, I learned how to use my voice instead of like stuffing it in like my mind BS wanted me to because of those middle school experiences where I said the wrong thing and I got mocked or I made somebody angry. And I learned to see emotions as messages instead of weaknesses. Emotions help me understand what I care about most, which helps me reduce my list. So thank you, emotions, especially the tough emotions like anger and sadness. When they show up, I know I've come across something I really care about, and I can go back to my no BS boundaries and figure out what to do about it. So with my old programs fading away, I was able to let go of so much that was draining my energy, like worrying about what other people think, because I was finally secure in the knowledge that my actions and what I'm spending my energy on today is in alignment with what really matters to me. And the other things just don't seem that important anymore. And so that's it. That's how you heal overwhelm from the inside. And I use these tools over and over again in my daily life. I have a full-time job, a blended family with four kids, and two side businesses, one that helps the kids and one that helps the parents. And each of those things comes with a giant list of to-dos that can definitely be overwhelming. And sometimes I slip back into that, oh my God, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this. My kid is hockey tonight, I'm never going to get it all done. When that happens, I can use these three steps to consciously start whittling my to-do list down into what is most important to me. I can start with some Mentio to soothe my nervous system and get out of that oh my God phase. And then I can move to my old programming. Why do I feel like I have to have all of these things done right now today? What would happen if I dropped some of the things, at least for now? And I like to ask myself, what do I wish could happen? And then see if I can make that wish come true for me. Like, maybe I wish I could just be like those other parents right now who don't seem to be so busy and they could just relax and enjoy the hockey game and be here and be present with their kids. So my mind BS is telling me that I'm going to be a failure if I don't get everything done. Every item on my multiple to-do list needs to get done in order for me to be a good human. But my heart and soul are telling me to just relax and enjoy my kids' hockey game. And so now that I'm clear on that, I'm ready to move to step three, where I implement these new programs. I implement the program where I can be present with my kids' hockey game. And I can say to myself, okay, me, we are going to drop everything else for now and just be really present at the kids' game. With the no BS boundary framework that I teach, once we've decided on our boundary, the final result is always to put your energy into your chosen option, which is being present for my kid, and celebrating that choice. What we're actually doing through all of this is rewiring our brain. And it's more effective when it's tied to an emotion. So I'm going to actively pat myself on the back for following through with what matters most. That's a huge step towards living my best life. So whenever my mind wants to wander back to all the things on the to-do list as I'm watching the game, I'm going to interrupt that pattern by reminding myself that this is my priority. And I'm going to tell myself, I'm a great mom for choosing to be present at this game. And while the game is on, I can even do some more Mentio, smiling softly to myself as I count to five in my head. So that's how you can do it over and over again in your life with each small decision. And your main takeaway here is that you're, you need to tackle overwhelm from the inside out and that it's not actually that hard to do and it does not need to take years. 
You can get started right away by downloading the free burnout escape plan. It's if you want a direct link, it's at mindbs.ca forward slash escape burnout. Um, and it's going to give you, like I said before, those Mentio exercises to get you started today. You do not have to live like this anymore. You do not have to feel overwhelmed anymore. You have got this, my friend. See you next time.